All right. Uh, one of the first questions was, how do you treat somebody um, who's been put out of the body and you work with them and you work with them? So we know the scripture says uh, don't have communication. Let's get that real quick. Romans 16 and 17. Let's get that to Romans 16 and 17. And then let's answer the question. Check, check. The book of Romans, chapter 16, and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. And what? And avoid them. So the scriptures tell you to mark them which cause divisions and avoid them. Now go to 1 Corinthians uh, 5 and read verse. Let's start at verse uh, 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. So he told, he told the congregation not to company with fornicators. Read. Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this he world. He said, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world. Read. Or with the covetous. Uh -huh. Or extortioners. Uh -huh. Or with idolaters. Read. For then must ye needs go out of the world. For then must you needs go out of the world. Uh, tch, tch, tch. Who can tell me what that means? Brother Josiah, what that's talking about? For then must you needs go out of the world. Are oh, you want to pay attention? I got you. No problem. You're doing flies. Who can answer that question for me? Who's answering? Who can? All right. Uh, here, Officer Zell. Shalom, leadership. Hey, shalom. Meaning the wicked is everywhere. You will have to die. You will have to leave the world. To there get you away. go. So he's leading us an example. What's, so, uh, what's the two differences, uh, uh, Officer Zeph? What is he making a difference between? Making the difference between being in the truth, congregating with them, and then being around them if it's not in the congregation. Good. So he's letting you know, Paul's letting us know something right here, that within the world you deal with adulterers, fornicators, um, what's the word? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh, people with heretics. That's what that's the word. You deal with heretics, all different doctrines. So, if you got to deal with a brother or sister, well, before I say that, how do you treat those people in the world? How should you treat those people in the world? The heretics, the adulterers, the fornicators. How should you treat those people in the world? Let me see. Christ said it. Well, no, I don't want that one yet. I just want a general. I uh, I think it's uh his name Alex. Alex, Alex. Shalom, Cap. Hey, uh, Shalom, Shalom. Are you dissing yourself? You do, you do. You don't go out to eat and all that stuff. Yeah. But how do you treat them? Do you treat them like they don't exist or what? How do you deal with them people? You just separate yourselves, but you be. Um, what if it's a situation where on the job, how you deal with those people? You still gotta have courtesy or uh, what's the word? Like respect. There you go. Yeah. You deal with them. Look, how many y'all grew up in a public school system? Okay, cool, cool. How many y'all ever did a group project? All right, cool. So if any of y'all got common sense, you got along with everybody in the class. During the project, for the time being, that's like when you go to work. Whether they believe what you believe, whether they like the clothes you like, whatever, you had differences. The Most High is telling us that is how we deal with these individuals that, um, that don't believe what we believe. Now, going back to the specific question, how do you handle that on the job? Go to Matthew 12. I mean, uh, Matthew, um, is it Matthew 12? 10. Or is it 18? It's 18, right? Yeah, 18. Matthew 18. This is the direct answer to your question. How do you treat them? And I went to all those examples first because I wanted you to acknowledge how do you treat brothers and sisters that are not in the truth? That's the real question you should be asking yourself because the answer is you treat them the same way you would treat anybody else. Read that. You said 18? 18 and verse um, 17. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. Uh huh. But if he neglect to hear the church. So this is at the point where a brother or sister is being put out. He neglect to hear the church, meaning the leadership. Read. Let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Treat him as a heathen and a publican. 
Meaning, you treat them as those without understanding or knowledge. So it's hi, it's bye, it's smile, how you doing every once in a while. That's the conversation. Y'all understand that? Yes, no? All right, cool. One more Be on that. Because you don't, control, um, you don't control who works with you. So you just treat them like, like somebody else. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yeah, because he said, uh, Kevin said, uh, you deal with them as if they are without. They are without the body, right? So let's see what Colossians chapter 4, verse 5 says real quick. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. Read. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. That's how you esteem them as they're without publicans. And what it says back in Matthews, publicans and what? Publicans and what? And heathen, right? So you got to walk with wisdom with them that are without. All right. Read on. Come on. Redeeming the time. Read on. Let your speech be always with grace. Because your mentality should be they need to repent and get themselves correct. All right. We don't go back on good times. It ain't kumbaya no more until you get yourself correct and right. But until then, you esteem them as publicans and sinners. All right. Or, or, or heathen. All right. That's it. All right, somebody asked a good question. How do I know when I'm ready to begin proving? Mm. How many of y'all single? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Oh, we got a lot of half-hearted hands in here. Raise them hands, brothers. Yeah, y'all know if y'all single. Especially you brothers in the front. Come on, raise them hands. All right. So how do you know? All right, y'all can put your hands down. So um, how do you know if you're ready to prove? Um... For the men, for the men, one of you single brothers, uh, tell us how you know when you're ready. What you need to have in order. Let's see. All right, Elijah, go ahead and answer. Stand up, bro. Yeah, I'm going to put you on the spot. Man, y'all acting shy, man. Goodness gracious. Go ahead, officer. Bring it up! What kind of help are you? <laughs> um, job in your own place. Huh? Job in your own place. Job in your own place? Yes, sir. That's, that's the beginning stage. It's what about spiritually? Because I know y'all asking for spiritual reasons, right? Spiritual reasons. In the truth, in the truth. <laughs> <laughs> officer, officer. Just, yes, just let it out, man. He, he's shy, y'all. He's all right. He, that's my brother right there, man. Bring it out, man. I mean, a lot of, I mean, <laughs> anybody got a job in their own place. Yeah. That don't mean nothing. Of course, in the truth, yes, in the truth. Okay, in the truth what? What that mean? Keeping the commandments and okay. the faith of Christ. Okay, all right, I, I'll take that in. Oh, praise. That ain't everything, because now, let's go to, uh, I'll use the scripture, we can use it another way. Go to first, uh, second essence 14, 14 and 13. For the men's side, you need to have a job. You need to have a place to stay, all right? That's the beginning stages. That's, that's the uh, physical part of it, all right? You got to at least have that. Then you can begin, uh, you can bring a woman underneath your, your hedge, and y'all can roll from there. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, set thine house in order mm -hmm. and reprove thy people. Mm -hmm. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. And now renounce corruption. So it says, set your house in order and reprove your people. Read. Let go from the mortal thoughts. That's a, that's a key part. You have to be able to let go of mortal thoughts, meaning you are a spiritual-minded individual. All right? Uh, most of the time, like we say, this is no law that you have to have rank to uh, be married in IUIC. I've seen a few marriages where a brother didn't have rank. But most of the time, um, single brothers, spiritually, when you're a soldier or an officer, spiritually, you're at the level where, you, where you're at, where you can be able to take on a woman. All right? Now, that's dealing with the men's side. House, job, you got a counselor, you have somebody that you can count on and get counsel with. All right? You've been in the truth X amount of time, X amount of years. You ready? All right. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. All right. 
For the woman, for the woman, for the woman. Let's go to Titus 2. When are you ready to prove? Let's go to Titus 2 and let's start at verse uh, 3. Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. The age woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, uh -huh. not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, uh -huh. that they may teach the young women to be sober, uh -huh. to love their husbands, uh -huh. to love their children, uh -huh. to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So... When you sisters are displaying some of those traits and you have a same thing, you have a counselor, you have an elder sister that you communicate with on the regular to examine you and see where you at spiritually, that's a, that's, a good, that's a good way to judge yourself if you're ready. Just like we always say in a period, you're never ready for anything until you do it. It is what it is. But spiritually... When you, when you see yourself um, having certain attributes, you're doing certain things, and your mind has changed. Only you know yourself. If you know you have certain thoughts and certain beliefs and certain things, and you see those things start to change, then you're ready. Don't go into a proven stage, and you still don't know who you are. You still don't even know what you're in, your beliefs, as an Israelite. If you don't know the Ten Commandments, you probably ain't ready to take on a spouse. <laughs> Sisters, you should know how to sew. You should know how to cook. All those things we just mentioned. You should take those attributes on before you get married. Because your husband don't want a, um, a crash course of fried chicken. <laughs> he don't want a crash course of you cleaning the house. You should learn those things beforehand. Right, right. That ain't an on-the-job training thing. You, those things should be sold up. And then uh, lastly, go to 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 real quick. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. This is the biggest part. You got to understand, especially for a woman, not, not so much for, for, for a man. But woman, you got to understand, am I willing to give myself up to adhere to somebody else? That's why we tell y'all all the time. Your marriage is a little hard on y'all because you've given up everything. Are you ready to adhere and call somebody your Lord? That guess what? If he wants whatever he wants that night, are you stubborn enough to cook what he wants and you ain't got an attitude the whole night? Or if he tell you he want it this way, it's a problem. If you're not overcoming those things, you're not ready. And those are small things. But if you're not able to, to take those things on, and be flexible in that, you're not ready to be married. If not, you're just gonna be, it's going to be a problem in the house. You're going to be trying to get counsel every week. And it's going to be like, well, what's the problem? He told me to do this. Okay, well, what's the problem? <laughs> exactly. Uh, what's the issue? You wanted to get married, right? All righty. That's what you signed up for. All right, read that all the way through. Examine yourselves, uh -huh. whether you be in the faith. Uh -huh. Prove your own self. So before you're ready to prove, you got to prove your own self. Matching up the scriptures of what a wife is. Go through all the women's scriptures you can find and say, do I adhere to this? Read. Know ye not your own selves? Uh -huh. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. Except ye be reprobate. So as I always tell brothers when they're looking for a woman... What are they doing in the, in the school? Are they doing anything? Because if they ain't doing nothing for the Lord, I can guarantee you they ain't going to do nothing for you. It's that simple. Because <laughs> they're calling you Lord, right? Well, see what they do for the real Lord first. And if he ain't getting nothing, you ain't getting nothing. All right? Likewise for the men, sisters. You looking for a Lord? See what he doing for the Lord? If he ain't giving nothing to the Most High, he don't give nothing to you. It's going to be the same situation. The way you do one thing, the way you do everything. It is what it is. Go ahead. Uh, I just got one scripture, uh, Luke 14 and 28. Because this is going to encompass all the marriage scriptures, like what has been coming out um, about having your own place and uh, don't marry for um, uh, 
physical, like in um, in uh, Toby. But you got to just read the scripture first. <laughs> read the scripture. The book of Luke, chapter 14 and verse 28. Uh -huh. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost? Now, the reason I pulled that is because I don't know what goes on on the sister's side, but I know we've had this conversation many times with these young brothers. Um, you have all the men up here are married. We know what marriage is like. We've been married for years. And a lot of these young men that say they want to get married, they don't reach out and ask no questions about situations, you know. Uh, what if this happens, or what if she does this, or so on and so forth, so that they can get some kind of understanding about what marriage really is. I know there's one soldier that I have had conversations with, um, but most of you brothers, you can't count the cost because you have no idea. You don't ask any questions, so you don't have no idea how to deal with something. You can read the scripture, but I remember a couple of years ago when... Um, when, when uh, Bishop asked a question, what if she spit in your face? Mm -hmm. You remember in Atlanta, he asked that question? Brothers could not answer. Because the first thing they want to do is pow. That's the first response. Okay? But there's a lot of things that lead up to that. So you got to count the cost. So seek somebody that has some experience for leadership and guidance. Right. Uh, one more on that one as well, because you said count the cost. So you have to prepare yourself for the mentality of being with somebody else. All right. Meaning that Christ said it himself best. He said those two become one flesh. So let's see what Paul said concerning that. Give me first Corinthians chapter seven and then read verse 27. This is what you have to prepare your mind for. First Corinthians chapter seven and verse 27. Read. Art thou bound unto a wife? Mm -hmm. Seek not to be loose. So you married, seek not to be loose. Read, come on. Art thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. Let's see what Paul is trying to prepare us as far as marriage is concerned. Read. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. Come on. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. So it's not a sin. You already know. We just do things lawfully, right? In order. Period. Read, come on. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. Are you prepared to endure those troubles that come in the flesh? Because that first image of that brother and that sister is always going to be pretense. You won't know that soul until 5, 10, maybe whatever, how long, how long years later along the line. As long as y'all have one thing in order, which is keep the commandments and the faith to Christ. If y'all are in Christ, everything else should be workable. Because in marriage, marriage is, it ain't even a 24-hour job. It's a lifelong job, a lifelong commitment. So you got to prepare yourself for working with somebody in the troubles in the flesh. The troubles in the flesh may be anything. Might be sex. It might be food. It might be this, that, and the third. Y'all are working, and to those two brother, uh, that 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 the the two, which is a brother and a sister, to be one flesh. All right. So that's it. We used to scream "Black Power" while Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day. Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.